Okay, I'm all right, the, all right. Uh, logician. I got, I got the story. All right, so um, this is this is going to be different in which it was neither mine nor Gaben's um story. So let me put up the title. Okay. Muck meets Mencino. I'm gonna guess it says Muck meets Mencino. So uh, okay. Mencino. All right. Yeah, this is a Pokemon fan fiction. Yeah, it's no. probably gonna end horribly. All right. <clears throat> okay. Mencino wandered through the meadow, picking up flowers as she went and putting them in her hair. She was supposed to be running errands, but since it was the last day before a hurricane was going to pass, she decided she would do something fun before she worked. Finding a rose and a dandelion, she entered the town and went toward the berry shop to get some extra food just in case. What kind would you like? asked the espion at the corner. Um, the Mencino thought. The Mencino. It's, this one says with two C's. Now, how about two orange berries and one peck of berry? She paid for her purchase and strolled back to the treehouse she lived in, making a few more preparations before collapsing onto her bed, flowers still in her hair. A muck had followed her on her way home, looking for a place to stay since he had nowhere to go. He usually lived in the sewers, of course, but those would be flooded with water and he def would definitely faint. He made his way inside the Mancino's house and sneaked into her trash can, staying awake the whole night. Anybody reacting yet? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the Mancino was jerked awake by a crack of lightning, making her yelp in fear. A few more were heard. We're heard? Uh, I already ate my s'mores. So, anyway... Ah, oh, damn it, you guys made me lose track. A few more we're heard, and she decided to get something to eat while she was awake. Still days, she would... She wobbled toward the fridge and took out a petcha berry, eating the only one she bought, brought. She ate it until only the leaves we're left. This is a recurring typo and opened the trash bin to find a huge purple glob in it. The Mancino shrieked as a huge blob of goop covered her, poisoning her. She wished she had a pinch of, saved a pinch of berry and fainted before she could even eat the oran berries. I thought these were pinch of berries. I thought I knew everything. The muck splatters his way out of the trash, picking up the Mancino with his oozing, sticky, slime-filled hands. He decided the best place to hide his victim was in his belly, and tossed her into his enormous maw, drenching her in slobber before greedily swallowing her. The muck now had the treehouse all to himself, but before he could rest, the from... the from door opened. Alarmed, the muck condensed beneath the couch in the living room before the Pokemon entered the room. It was the berry shop owner, Espeon. She had heard the Minchina scream and decided she was strong enough to save her. What do you think it was? asked a voice. It was deeper and sounded as if the Pokemon was a dark or steel type. This is... This sounds a bit racist. I don't know why, I just think it. I just think it might. Hey, Jamie, what are we doing? I'm reading another fanfic. I'm assuming it's the Pokemon. Whoever it was, he was obviously the husband of boyfriend of the Espeon. Husband of boyfriend of... I'm sorry, this, this story is littered with so many misspellings. I don't know where the Espeon, but she's not here and she wouldn't be outside when... The Espeon hadn't finished her sentence before her frail body sank to the floor. Her eyes rolling back to the back of her head. A poisonous gas had filled the room without the Espeon not noticing it. The other Pokemon then revealed itself as an Umbreon as he dashed into the room, picking up the Espeon by his mouth and... 
trying to sprint away. The Aubryon could see the exit, but he blanked out on the porch. The muck slid over to the porch, dragging both the Umbreon and Espeon inside. He had now proclaimed as his domain. The Umbreon seemed to be the stronger one of the couple, so the muck decided to eat him and store Espeon just in case they recovered from their poisoning. The Umbreon was pretty much the exact opposite of the Espeon. His body was stuffed and his fur straight and thick. The muck placed the Umbreon into a slippery tongue, making his prey slide around like a slice of butter would on a frying pan. The muck then flipped his tongue backward and devoured the Umbreon in one gulp. The Umbreon stuffed furs caressing his gullet. He now was quite full of with a mouse and cat in his stomach and slept until the storm was over. The Espeon woke up in a right cabinet being stored as if she was a toe duct. What is a toe duct? Enraged by this, she used a second blast on the wall, scaring the muck and making him rush over. Are you awake, sleepyhead? The muck taunted. It was then the Espeon noticed that he had said sleepyhead and not sleepyheads and worried about her mate. Where is Umbreon? demanded the Espeon. She was answered by a hearty belch and a chuckle. Now crying, the Espeon whispered, uh, whimpered. Did you do that to whoever lived here too? Sighed the Espeon, this depressed that she couldn't save anyone. Let's just say I'm pest control, commented the muck. Abd, abd, Okay, I'm reading this word, it's A-B-D. What is that supposed to be pronounced? Abd- Abd- Sure. Abd and Mouse and Cat both were the pests I had to- I had to rid of. I recently got a complaint for another as well. I heard there is a pinkish colored cat with a tail that branches off into two and had a- and has a gen on her- Gem? It says gen, not gem. I don't even know what... Someone forgot to do some spell checking on this stupid thing. It's usually Gen 43. Sure. Now, who could that be? He finished unlocking the cabinet and immediately wrapped his tongue around the helpless Espeon. Please stop! Yelled the Espeon, interrupted by a massive slurp, causing her to close her mouth and hack a few times. The commotion wasn't heard by a neighbor. I'm pretty sure my neighbor Paul might be hearing this, and wow, this is going to be awkward. The Espeon eventually submitted to the muck's will, being pushed down through the narrow gullet and into a small opening. The Espeon was then greeted by a claustrophobic, claustrophobic cage of a stomach, I'm sorry, tongue twisted, and she had to curl up into a ball inside the oval-shaped belly. The muck decided he was the new owner of the house, and he would soon own many others in the neighborhood as well. The end. That was the weirdest story I ever heard. I read it 10 out of 10. And he was so scary that they all died at once. <gasps> oh, 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 Where's the limit? Leave me. Oh, wait, Jay, leave me alone. I'm an enforcer. Wabbits in hell. <laughs>